Welcome to Behind the Badge with your special guest, Lieutenant Williams. Your new source for all things police in the city of Fond du Lac. Welcome back into Fond du Lac today on News Talk 1450 and 100.7 KFIZ. Joining us now from the police department is Officer Clapper. It's now time for another edition of Behind the Badge. Good morning, Officer Clapper. How's it going today? Good morning, Braden. Uh, Lieutenant Williams had SWAT training today, so he's unable to make it. Um, but uh, it's good to be back in the nice temperature-controlled studio. Uh, How many times are you going to say that, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, the old place was cold. Yeah, this is uh, actually kind of nice. I don't get cold in here. So. Not yet. Uh, actually, it's almost too warm in here. Yeah, nice. it is a little warm. <laughs> I'm not we'll, used to it. We'll get it just perfect for you one of these days. Okay, just keep coming back. I'll be waiting. You're, and it sounds like you're still going to be joining us for quite some time. I know we've kind of talked off air, but um, things have kind of snagged and you're probably going to be on light duty for a little longer. Yep. Uh, my injury uh, recovery isn't going as it was perceived it would be, so I'll be here for a little bit while yet. Sounds good. We appreciate having you every single time. And this works out really well when Lieutenant Williams can't make it like this morning and you can just fly solo. Absolutely. So as we look ahead to today's show, what do you got on the agenda? A um, couple things, actually. Um, so one thing I get asked frequently is why are some officers wearing different uniforms than others? Um, so some people or some of you may have noticed uh, some officers wear uniforms that are typical. There's like the light blue uniform, which is our community service officers. Um, they're non-sworn. They take minor calls for service um, to help alleviate some of the call load from us. Um, a patrol officer will wear, or a sworn police officer will wear a uh, dark blue uniform. Um, some of our shirts have a, like a black and gray shoulder patch, um, a sewn on badge. Those are our, our class B or like our tactical style uniforms. Um, so we have a couple different class, classes for our uniforms. Class A, which is typically what we'll wear for like a jury trial for court um, or funeral stuff like that. That consists of a shirt, um, nice dress pants, and then it'll have our shirt will have a tie, it'll have a real badge, um, any awards we've received, um, an actual nameplate. Uh, it does have a um, hat as well, a dress hat. And then um, that'll be like typically for like funerals, events, uh, court, and then we have our patrol uniforms, which some actually kind of look similar to our class A uniforms. So. Some officers, uh, a particular one and uh, I can think of right now is Officer Bednarik. He wears the um, uniform shirt. It's got red, uh, our, like our actual painted or like colored patch. It okay. um, has like some red, blue, and yellow in it. Um, that's not the black and gray uh, patches. And then a real badge and a real nameplate. Um, and then there's another uniform that patrol officers can wear or even supervisors. It's a... Uh, instead of wearing your vest on the inside of your uniform, uh, it's on the outside of your uniform. So uh, I have this vest that I wear when I'm on patrol. Uh, I will uh, share a picture of it in the YouTube video. Uh, but it alleviates some uh, of the stuff that goes on my duty belt. So in law enforcement, we wear duty belts depending upon what you have on your belt. It can be anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. So right. it takes a toll on your hips and your lower back. So alleviating some of that stuff on your um, hips is huge uh, and putting it on your tactical vest or your outer vest. Um, so you may have seen some officers out there uh, wearing this. It says police on the back in white lettering and then it just basically has uh, the badge still, our names, and then you can put different stuff on it. For an example, I have my radio on there, um, some tourniquets for medical supplies, uh, my pepper spray, I think that's really about it, but some officers literally have like everything, like extra magazines for their handgun, taser, uh, baton, everything off their, their hips, uh, which is really good for us. But I like it the best, like if, if I'm out on a case and I have a lot of physical evidence and I come back to the PD or I just want to work on reports or even on lunch break, just take it off and breathe a little bit mm -hmm. because that gets warm a lot, especially in summer. So it's nice to just pop it off if you're in a safe environment and just be able to breathe a little bit more, um, especially in the summer months when it gets pretty warm and you're wearing all that gear. So um, we're excited for the, the new tactical or our vests um, that we're starting to see more officers wear. So 
Um, and then I just wanted to touch a little bit on our res renovations to the PD. And Can I it. circle back to the uniform dress list here? Um, how many uniforms do you have for like your day to day when you're patrolling? How many do you have? How often do you have to do laundry? Sure. So um, each officer is issued three uniforms. So um, that's just patrol uniforms, and then you have your court uniform as well. So my uniform um, closet, I guess you can can say, consists of three short sleeve shirts, three long sleeve shirts, and then three uh, pairs of pants. So I have to do laundry maybe once a week. Um, typically, uh, my vest, I don't wash that often, unless it's obviously summer and then you start to get a little smelly or it gets dirty. <laughs> um, and then we also will have uh, a winter jacket and winter hat and stuff like that issued by the department. So uh, I typically try to stretch out my uniform as many days as I can, as long as it doesn't get super dirty. Mm -hmm. um, but every officer is different. I know some people wash their uniform every single day. I try to stretch it out a day or two. Um, but it's nice to have options as well because if you get dirty or you put a hole in your pants or something like that, um, it's nice to be able to quick go home or come back to the PD and change quick and have that option so uh, we don't have to be constantly asking somebody to get us a new pair of pants. Well, that's gonna be my next step. What's the process to where how long do you have to work there before you can start collecting more uniforms where you're having more than, let's say, three in your Rolodex? Sure. So I, like I said, I have three. Um, that's just standard. Every new officer gets that. But uh, I probably have like five or six pairs of pants because I went through a little span there where I kept uh, blowing up the zippers in my pants for some reason. <laughs> so uh, we did that and then uh, actually got in uh, a foot chase one day and ripped my pants on a... Uh, fence. So uh, the, while they were getting repaired, the department ordered me new pants, and I've gone through a couple of pairs where, uh, unfortunately, it just keeps blowing out in the same spot. So we had to get rid of those. But uh, at one point, I had probably like five or six pairs of pants, including my court pants and shorts and stuff like that. So um, when we have to order them, we just go to uh, likely Lieutenant Williams or Assistant Chief Laird, and who can then order them. And if it's an emergency, hopefully they have an extra pair of our size to borrow for the time being. You're listening to Behind the Badge this morning on KFIZ. We've got Officer Clapper in the studio as we're chatting with him about uniforms to start this conversation. Now we see, you know, you're on light duty, you know, you're normally in a polo, maybe some nice shorts, maybe you're wearing pants. Is that kind of the common light duty attire or how does that work for other people in the uh, police department? Sure, so for light duty, um, it's business casual type of clothing. Um, can't obviously wear a uniform because we're probably injured, right? So um, we don't want to display ourselves as law enforcement because we don't, we can't act if we mm -hmm. need to. Um, for an example, like if I had to wear a uniform and something were to happen when I just went over to Quick Trip by the police department, and I, I would expect you to be able to do something. Right, exactly. And if I have the issues that I have, I probably won't be able to act as full of a capacity mm -hmm. as I would have before I got injured. So um, that's typically what we wear, is just something business casual, professional, obviously. So not um, what I normally wear on these things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's the worst part about it though, is having to know what I gotta wear every day or pick out an outfit each day. You know, on patrol, you know what you're wearing, yeah, you know? Right. Same boots, same sh pants or shorts, same shirt, ex exactly the same thing every day. So when I came to light duty, it was just like, oh, I gotta pick up my outfit mm -hmm. each day, which I mean, everybody else pretty much, unless you wear a uniform for work, has to do the same thing. So I feel for you guys out there having to figure out what you're gonna wear five days a week. <laughs> All right, and before we let you get out of here today, Officer Clapper, um, renovations, I know you guys are doing some work at the police department. Yep, um, so if you've ever been in our building, or know a little bit of history about our building. Um, it was actually the Wisconsin Power and Light Company, shared with uh, the Fond du Lac Credit Union for a while. So the lobby area of our building was Fond du Lac Credit Union, uh, it was a fully functional bank. And then part of it was uh, Wisconsin Power and Light, which is why the garage is so big and tall, because they had their trucks in there. Well, inside of our department, um, in the secure area, there's offices, in an area that the design is actually in the shape of a W for Wisconsin Power and Light. So the offices are like triangular offices and they're just not very spacious. <laughs> and our building is probably about 40 years old now, I would say. And it's starting to get a little dated. Um, 
we had a uh, insurance company, Favo, and part of our building leasing it from us for a while. So um, they moved out into their own building and now we're looking to maximize the space we have. So um, the part of uh, where Favo was is closer to Main Street. Uh, we're starting renovations here, I think, this coming week. Uh, and ultimately, it's going to be, a, I think, a three or four year project. Wow. So they're going to start by, um, now that we've got additional officers coming, and a lot of them are female. And the female locker room is very small. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to maximize space. They're going to take out, right now our locker rooms are in the same little, uh, I guess, same area. There's a wall dividing the two. So what they're going to do is they're going to move the females' locker room to a different part of the building to make it bigger, and then they're going to get rid of the wall and make the men's locker room bigger as well, and to give us some bigger lockers. So right now we have two sets of lockers. So, um, like for an example, in my regular locker in the locker room, I have like my uniform that I wear that day, my duty belt, uh, any extra equipment, and that's really about it. And then I have another locker that'll have like extra uniforms, my jacket, extra pair of the shoes. Uh, my duty bag that has all my paperwork for on the road, uh, rain jacket, hat, all that kind of stuff. So um, they're trying to alleviate having two sets of lockers for us and put it all in one area. And right now we don't really have a great place to hang our vests either to dry out. So um, they're going to start working on that. I think that's one of our first areas. Um, they're also going to start in an area by our gym and have the storing, storage rooms for each of our specialized teams. So like the drone robot team. Um, explosive breaching unit, stuff like that, the tactical field force, they're all going to have an individualized storage room. So they're not, there's not just stuff kind of laying around out or hodgepodge throughout the police department. So that'll be good to have easily accessible off of our garage, like for our drone team, because we're all of our stuff is inside of the police department. It's just a longer walk for us to carry the equipment in the time of uh, need. And then uh, another couple areas that are going to be changed um, are evidence room. It's going to be expanded and completely remodeled. Our records area is going to be remodeled as well. And then ultimately our detective bureau is going to be moved. They're going to get, right now they just have like little cubicles. Um, they're going to get their own individual offices and our lobby is going to be renovated at some point as well. So, um, so you saw that we did a lot of work at the radio station, got a new building, and then you guys are like, well, we need a new place. Yeah, we got to do some catching up to KFIZ here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of changes coming. A lot of them are good, and we're looking forward to see what our building looks like once it's done. It's going to take a little bit of process, and I'm sure it'll be a mess in the time, but after uh, it's completed, it'll be good for um, us and us or for the public as well. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome, driver. We appreciate the time this morning. Anything else before I let you get out of here? Uh, no, hopefully Lieutenant Williams will be back next week, though. So This has been Behind the Badge on the one you depend on for News Talk and Sports, KFIZ. Thank you.